The North Court Housing Estate, as it is now called, was built by the borough of Gravesend between 1931 and 1933-34. Roughly 378 houses of varying sizes were built and it was built in what was then a rural location in the parish of Denton outside of the borough boundaries of Gravesend for the benefit of those people that lived in the town centre in poor and often slum-like housing. They were brought out to a brand new estate, complete with shops, complete with pub, and eventually Northcourt County Primary School, which was the last thing to be built on the estate. And this is it, Northcourt Primary School, opened by the local MP, Sir Irving Albury, on the 8th of September, 1938. The children, however, did not take up their lessons until the following Monday on the 12th of September, 1938. That was the genesis of Northcourt School. The Second World War broke out on the 3rd of September, 1939. 74 local children from this estate were evacuated from West Street Pier on paddle steamers round to Great Yarmouth and from thence to the small village of Toftwood near East Durham. I was 10 when I was evacuated. We went in, we got round to Yarmouth and we had bags of straw to sleep on. Of course, some of them got a bit itchy and they said they've all got to wash their hair in vinegar. But when I got along to that corner, I saw my mum standing at the door. I was like, I don't want to go. But you had to go. No, no one told us where we were going or why we were going. We walked from Dickens Road to West Street Pier. The policemen were carrying the little ones and we boarded a boat called the Royal Daffodil and we went right round the, the North Sea to Yar Great Yarmouth. When you get things on TV about the evacuees or that you're taken to certain houses, no way, not where I was mm. anyway. It was awful. It was so degrading, it really was. We put into a classroom and the people came in to see the evacuees and they walked up, up and down and if they liked the look of you, they took you. If they didn't, then you just had to wait until somebody did. Of course, for the pupils of Northcourt School, brand spanking new state of the art, the trip to Toftwood was more than just a geographical experience. It was one where they went back in time to a rural Victorian school with earthen toilets and smelly classrooms. And then one of my, because my brother and I, we got split up. I think it must have been at least a fortnight before I found out where he was. So we had oil lamps, no electric. That's the other thing, when I was looking for a light switch, she said, I was in the kitchen and she said, what are you looking for? I said, I can't find this light switch. I mean, I come from a house with electricity. She said, oh, don't know switches here. We have oil lamps and candles. Of course, the air aids that were all expected in this area never materialised, so that by Christmas 1939 and early 1940, most of the pupils had in fact returned back to the Northcourt estate. And all these decades later, several teachers' names are engraved in our memories. Miss Richards. Mr Morris. Miss Colby. Miss Colby. Mr Riddler. Mr Riddler. Mr Riddler. Mr Riddler. Although one building, Northcourt School was in fact two individual schools. At this side it was the infants, run by Miss Vera Richards, who was in fact the headmistress here from 1938 when the school opened until she retired at the very end of 1966. Whereas on the other side of the building was the juniors, run by Arthur Riddler, and he was the headmaster of the juniors again from 1938 until he retired in April 1965. Yeah, you know, it's like Northcourt and the separate entrances of the boys and girls, which would be unheard of now, wouldn't it, really? Like, you know, yeah. boys one in, girls the other in. Very strict. 
um, you weren't allowed to talk in corridors. I was caned here as, a, as an infant, remind you, and uh, Mr Riddler <laughs> was six foot eight and I got caned across the tops of my fingers. And I'll tell you what, it throbbed for two days, my fingers. I used to absolutely love sports days. So this, this all Shamrock, Rose, and well, I think it was named up the, the, the street. In, it wasn't Ingalls, it was no, that sort of thing. But that, yeah. that was, it was really competitive. I mean, it was really competitive. I mean, everyone took it dead serious. The headmistress of the, of, uh, the school, Miss Richards, she was one wicked woman, she was. She always had a, a fist like that. She always reckoned she never touched you, but she used to push you, and you always got the wash them a bit, you know, one thing and the other. But the headmaster for the junior part, he could not do enough for everybody on the estate. His, Mr. His name was Mr Riddler. It was for everybody on the estate. If he could help you out in any way, he would help you out. He was a brilliant headmaster. Nitty Nora, the knit nurse, I remember her. I think, like, oh my God, here she comes, I'll be terrified. And then you please, I haven't got any, please. It used to be, I used to be petrified that, because if you had nits, you was like, oh my God, he's got nits, or she's got nits. And I used to think, oh please, and I used to pray that she wouldn't find a knit in my hair. Obviously, being an ex-pupil myself from Chalk that came to this school, I have memories of many teachers, and Miss Vera Richards, the formidable headmistress, was one of them. She drove a very large black car with side runners, parked it more or less here, got out of the car every morning and proceeded to cover her car with a great heap of old blankets, coats and other detritus. It looked like a great big mound of Oxfam rubbish. Looking back now as an adult, I could see that poor Miss Richards really, really was run ragged. Not only did she virtually run the infant school on her own with uh, very few other teachers, but also she had the incessant civil war with Mr Riddler to deal with. And on top of that, recalcitrant pupils like myself. On one occasion, I remember her losing her temper, sticking out her bottom lip like this, and then getting the blunt end of a pencil and ramming it in your ribs quite a few times because I've annoyed her. Painful. The Gordon Mission building that you see behind me had its origins in those slum areas of Gravesend and was associated with General Gordon, who, although he never worked there, but his work with the poor in Gravesend meant that they wanted to remember him in succeeding years. And the Gordon Mission's mission was to bring Christianity and practical help to the poorest dwellers of Gravesend. And once many of them had moved out to estates such as this, the Gordon Mission quite naturally followed them. I used to go there when I was a little girl. We used to have hymns and that, like Sunday school. That was a good, good place. Anybody down here who went there would tell you that was a good place. And I don't know why they can't have it now as a Gordon Mission. Instead of having people living in there, they always made a thing of a Bible story. It was, you were spellbound with what was being said. Because I never minded going to Sunday school. My, boy, my brother Derek, um, he, said, he said to me, I'm not going. I said, you have, you've got to go. He said, I'm not going. He said, he was going off with one of his, his friends. And my mum found out. She did not flash out at him. She smacked his backside till he couldn't sit down. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that now, are you? <laughs> Didn't harm us. The relationship with the school was even closer. In the early 1960s, when there was a huge overcrowding problem at Northcourt with the baby boom, this was used as extra classrooms. Pupils would come out of the entrance, march down this road, and many of them would then make a break for freedom by running down into Dickens Road and disperse amongst the other streets. And from 1973 until 1989, it was also used by Northcourt School as what was then termed a unit for maladjusted children. In the early years of the Northcourt estate, like everywhere else, really up until the 1950s, there were a few televisions 
and entertainment was expensive, so you did your own, playing games here in the streets or else using the greens that were provided as a part, an integral part of the Northcourt estate at that time. Whipping top, we'd have a skipping rope across the road, we'd all get out there, all play skipping rope, whipping top. I think a few, a few people had skates, jigsaw puzzles. Another thing was um, the, the wireless only went if you had an accumulator and there was like a battery thing, a glass thing like that. And you used to have to take it up to the garage, have it charged. Dick Barton, special agent, we was interested in things like that. If that was on, on the radio, we were indoors listening to that Dick Barton, special agent, see how he got on. But up from that, um, knock up ginger. Sometimes we, got, we played that, which was all. We always went to the same woman. <laughs> cricket, I liked a bit of cricket in the old garden. Garden or it was out on the road. Because there, there was nowhere else, although you had this bit, this place here, because it was a school, the caretaker always used to ch chase you off, even in the holidays. Weekends, my husband and I used to take on fishing along the canal basin and down the sea wall, weekends when it's nice. And then we used to take them at the seaside place every other weekend, South End, Margate. And then they play out the front, no trouble. They used to play Kirby, and the kids still play Kirby now. You know, just to get a ball thrown against the curb, and they still play the old fashioned games. And then we used to play cricket in the, in the, in the road. There wasn't a the cars about them, there wasn't a the cars. I know we used to play cricket, we used to have a lot of box, a wooden cardboard box as a wicket in the middle of the road. And this bloke used to come round, run it over like, he was a horrible, nasty piece of work. So we filled it up with bricks one day. He never done it again. <laughs> Many people from the estate worked in Gravesend and holidays consisted of day trips to places such as Laysdown, Margate, Broadstairs and indeed South End. A train used to stop at Denton Halt and take day trippers to All Hallows and indeed other places and working holidays included those with hot picking in Kent and pea picking, all of which were very popular until the late 1960s and early 70s. Um, when I was about six we used to go hot picking down at to Branchley Farm in Faversham, uh, just outside Faversham. A lorry used to come, we used to load up and, um, and off we'd go. When we got to the hot gardens, we, there was a row of huts, corrugated iron. My mum used to take a big mattress cover and the farmer supplied straw and you filled the mattress covers with the straw and that was your bed and everybody slept on that one bed. And we had um, open fires which the, um, the food was cooked on. And we were there about four, four five weeks hot picking. And then we came back and went to school. Obviously in the streets of this estate, like everywhere else, it was the location of <laughs> tradesmen that came to sell their wares. Oh, we used to have um, Johnson, the old man. He used to come round. Like when he was getting out, he used to sell the oil then, you know, when they used to have the power thing eaters. We used to have a baker called Grooms. He used to come. We had a milkman. Uh, a veg man come round on horse and cart, Mr Jim Flint. I knew him as a kid. You had a little red baker's van selling bread and cakes. You had a little man chopped up wood, bundles of wood with a barra. He used to come round to neighbours, and also the Coleman. Featherstone's Coleman, I always remember them, when you had the open fires. On a Sunday, the fish man used to come round, pint of shrimps or cockles, he used to come round shouting, he had an enormous big basket with his arm on, and you'd go out there and get a pint of winkles or cockles. And then the later time, muffin man, the muffin man used to come round, you'd be able to go and get some muffins, and you'd be able to toast them in front of your coal fire. And that was, on a Sunday, you'd get that. They used to get a piece of pudding and faggot man come round on a trolley once a week sort of thing. And that certain night we'd have piece of pudding and I ate it. Uh, we used to get a toffee apple man come round. Oh, we used to give you a bag of rags, he'd give you a goldfish or a toy. Yeah. 
but we ended up with so many goldfish from all the rags. <laughs> <laughs> we was hunting the marsh for rags so we could get yeah. goldfish. A confession to the camera to my dear aunt, who I loved bits. <laughs> When the rag and bone man used to come round and give us goldfish for old clothing, a few of their jumpers went, but they, they never found out. <laughs> well, they did, I think, but they didn't know it was me. It was me! <laughs> and in the house, it was simple meals, and the only takeaway was fish and chips, with regular events such as wash day and all that that entailed in the household. There used to be a, an old metal bath and he used to pull it out and get it in the front room and fill it up with water. This is the site of the Dickens Inn, opened in 1934, and a very important part of the history of the Northcourt estate. Charles Dickens had a big association with Gravesham and many local places featuring in his novels. 300 yards up the road, we have Joe Gardry's Forge at Chalk, a village in which he spent his honeymoon. And down on the marshes, we have the Ship and Lobster, known as the ship, both from Great Expectations. The Dickens Inn was owned by Truman's Brewery, but the landlady was the formidable Mrs Hinton. No yobbos or trouble was allowed in her pub. But by the late 1980s, it had become a management pub and it had changed its name to the Colonial. I used to take a jug on a Sunday at lunchtime to go to Bottle and Jug Bar to get, um, it's the only day my mum and dad drank. The lady that ran it was really, really strict. And there was a little, it used to be called an off license. And you used to walk in there and it was about that square. It weren't very big. And there's all getting drink. And there was a saloon bar and a public bar. And the saloon charged 2p more a drink than the public bar. And the old lady was really strict, I forget her name now, and used to walk in there like, and you used to petrify like. And then used to get the strippers back on the bottles. So we used to go around the back and get the bottles and then take them back in. But she caught us one day, so that got stopped. But he was literally, he was petrified. In them days, it was the old piano for our music, no discos then, I can remember that. The Dickens. And that was a nice little pub. That was the first time I went in with, and that was with my father-in-law. I never drank then, and he said, get in that corner, and you're going to have a drink. So I said, all right. What, Shandy? He said, no, and he gave me a pint of beer. You had the little snug where the elderly people went in on Dickens Road, and they'd sit there, they'd have their half pint or one thing in the other, and they thoroughly really enjoyed it. Yeah, the old friend Dickens. They used to take that in and out, didn't they? You always used to see that going mm. in and out of there. I don't know why they took it in there. Probably wanted a pie. Probably. <laughs> <isn't it>? Probably. <laughs> well, it's the same house has gone through the pub again and then back out again. <laughs> Obviously, the last word about any community should be left to its citizens. Oh, I've loved it down here. I, I, uh, we just swap it for the world. You know, everybody sort of knew everybody and um, they'd help anyone out. Well, a lot of them said they want to come back, what's moved away, but you'll get some of these people and they say, oh, we wouldn't live down there. Not that island. Clearly your view's different. Yeah, I, I like down here. I wouldn't change it. If they come there and said to me, you've got to get out, I'd rather take another dose. I'll be straight with you. Because I like this house, and no way will they take me out of here unless I'm in my box.